So welcome to um, our review session on electric charge and current. Um, in this session, what we're just going to go over is trying to recall and apply um, the equation for electric charge and just look at the um, theory behind it and some of um, the context for it and some work examples. So just thinking back to the ideas that you already know about um, electrical circuits. Now, in electrical circuits, we should know that um, we use batteries or cells or power sources where energy is transferred from um, chemical stored battery um, to the energy store of um, a component in a circuit, like a light bulb giving out light and heat energy. Um, now, the pathway by which the energy is transferred um, is the electrical pathway or electrical current. And it um, goes through things like um, copper wire. Now, what we've got to think about is we've got to think about um, what we mean by terms that are associated with um, electricity. So if we start with this idea of electrical charge. Now, electrical charge is simply a way of quantifying, quantifying the um, movement and the flow of the number of electrons around a circuit. So charge is refer to as the quantity of electrons that are moving around the circuit. It's how we quantify it then. If you remember that electrons are negatively charged particles. Electrons are negatively charged particles. And we measure charge in a unit called Coulomb. Now, sometimes you see charge written with the symbol Q. Now, it's important that you get an idea as to how much Coulomb is. So if you think about the size of an electron, it's obviously the smallest subatomic particle that there is. Now, and if we think about quantifying it in a unit, one Coulomb is worth 6.24 times 10 the 18 electrons. So what we are dealing with is when we're talking about the amount of electrical charge flying around a circuit, we're talking about large numbers. Large numbers of electrons moving around a circuit. Now, we also need to be sure we understand the other definition and that is current okay so current um we might describe as the flow we might describe it as the flow of electrical charge now specifically flow of charge per second Now, that can seem quite complicated, but if we're going to break it down, what we actually mean here, when we're talking about current, we're talking about simply um, the number of electrons, number of electrons, we're going to use an E minus just to abbreviate it here in our writing. So the number of electrons that move past a point in a circuit per second. There's the number of electrons that move past a point in a circuit um, per second. Then we often see this measured in amps. So if you have a little look at the two diagrams that are drawn out below, it's worth drawing out as well to get an understanding of what we mean. Now, if we imagine that this is the same point in a wire, okay, so this is our wire, this is our wire. We know that electricity is obviously a measure of the movement of electrons, our little E minuses, 
flying around a circuit, okay? So what we're looking at here is we're saying actually how many of these electrons are passing, are passing a specific point in this wire each second? Are there more electrons or are there less electrons? So is there a greater flow of charge or a lesser flow of charge? Now, if you have a look here, it's quite obvious to see there's less electrons in this wire. There are more electrons in this wire flowing past that point in the wire per second. So, we'd say here in this one, it's smaller, smaller, the smaller the rate of flow of charge. So, in other words, the fewer electrons there are moving, the fewer electrons there are moving, then that means we have a smaller current. The smaller smaller the current. Whereas if we have got a larger number of electrons moving past a specific point in a wire each second, we'd have a bigger rate of flow of charge. So the bigger rate of flow of charge Conversely, we'd have a bigger current. Bigger the current. So, important points to start with when we're talking about electrical current and electrical charge. Charge is our way of quantifying the number of electrons that are moving around the circuit. It's measured in coulombs, okay? And one coulomb is worth 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So when we're talking about electrical um, electricity flowing around the circuit, we're talking about millions and millions of electrons moving around and around and around. Whereas when we're talking about current, we're talking about flow of charge per second. It's measured in amps. And what we mean by that is we're talking about the number of electrons that are moving past a specific point in a circuit per second. Now, if we have fewer electrons moving past a specific point in a circuit, then we do where we have more electrons moving past a specific point in a circuit. We've got a smaller current. Whereas if we've got more electrons moving past a specific point in a circuit each second. We've got a bigger rate of flow of charge, so we've got a bigger current. So there, that's like our underlying principles and our definitions that we need to know when we're talking about charge and we're talking about current. Because when we're talking about electricity, we are obviously talking about electrons moving around a circuit carrying negative charges. Okay? Now, with any of um, our physics work, it's important that we are able to show this relationship in an equation form. So the equation that's associated with calculating electrical charge is what you describe as charge flow. You describe as charge flow, okay? Charge flow equals current times time. Charge flow equals current times time. Now, if you see it written in the symbol of Q, equals I T. Now, units that these are measured in C coulombs, as we were saying, one coulomb, 6.24 times 10 to the 18 um, electrons. A for amps. And an S per second. So these are obviously your units. Now, whenever 
whenever you are trying to um, get a correct answer on a question to do with electrical charge, you're always looking to try and convert your answer back into these units unless it tells you to otherwise. Now, obviously, with any of these equations that you have to come across in your physics exams, you've got to be able to use the rearrangements of them so that we can calculate any of the three components in here. So if we wanted to work out, for example, current, we divide both sides by current, um, both sides by time, we end up with current equals charge flow divided by time. And if we wanted to work out time, if we divide both sides by current, we end up with charge flow divided by current. Charge flow divided by current. So obviously we need to be familiar with using these, um, these three arrangements of the equation in order to either calculate charge, to calculate current, or to calculate time. So let's have a look at a couple of worked examples that if we write out and go through them together, showing the differences that we can sometimes get in these kind of equations, uh, questions. So if we start, for example, with um, a simple question, so our first work example. Now, what charge passes a point if two amps flows for two minutes? So, first thing, what's the data in this question? So we know we've got amps. So our current equals two amps. What charge? So we know we're wanting to find out charge because we don't know it. It asks us what charge is that? And then Two minutes, so that's our time. We've got time. It's two minutes. Now, remember, we said our units for time in this these kind of questions aren't minutes. We have to convert it to seconds. So two minutes is equals one hundred and twenty seconds. So that's our equation. So we know we need to calculate charge. So charge equals charge equals um so simply current times time so if we then substitute in our values so we know that charge equals two times 120. So therefore we can then calculate our answer as being 240. Now remember, charge, so our unit, would be coulombs. So, nice starting simple work example. Let's go for a slightly more complex one. Let's go for a slightly more complex one. If we have a look now at the following question. The following question. Right, we write it out together. In a lightning, in a lightning flash, in a lightning flash, a typical amount of charge. which reaches the Earth is 10 coulombs. If the flash lasts 
for 0.5 milliseconds, what is the average current? Okay, so that's our question. Hopefully you've got that written out. So if we go through our steps, firstly, in the question, what's the data that we've got? So what's the average current? It's asking us to find the current. We don't know that. Our charge, that charge is 10 coulombs. And then if the flash lasts for 0.5 milliseconds, so our time equals 0.5 milliseconds. Now, we don't want our time units to be in seconds. We want that to be converted into seconds. So if you end up with a time that is milliseconds, to convert to seconds, you need to divide by 1,000. So our time then becomes... 0.005 seconds. Okay, so we now need our equation. So we were looking for current equals. So current from our equations earlier equals charge divided by time. So now, obviously, we need to substitute in our values. So current equals 10 divided by 0 0.0005. And finally, all we do is calculate. So therefore, current equals 10 divided by 0 0.005 will give us, pop it the calculator, 20,000. Now, it's current, so our unit would be amps. We've got another worked example there. Now, if we have a look at, um, I think, one final example, just to um, add a little bit more detail and show you that it's primarily I'm talking about these kind of questions you have to be careful and just looking at conversion of units so what you write out the following with me so three in a tv tube picture is formed by streams of electrons hitting the screen. Hitting the screen. Now, current is 20 milliamps how much charge hits the screen in 30 minutes okay, okay. data we don't know the charge our current equals 20 milliamps and our time equals 30 minutes. So, as we said before, we need to convert these back to amps, back to seconds. So, like with our previous question, we can get this to amps from milliamps. If we divide it by 1000, we end up with 0.02 amps. In 30 minutes, to get it in seconds, we have to times by 60. So that gives us 1800 seconds. So what's our equation? Charge 
charge equals, so now we need uh, current times time. If we substitute in our values, So we then end up with 0.02 times 1800. And then if we calculate our steps, we end up with charge equals 0.02 times 1800 gives us 36. And as charge is our final answer, our unit is in Coulombs. So you've got some worked examples there that you can use to look at calculating charge flow, current or times, dependent on the arrangement of the equation, using our key steps of data equations, substitute and calculate. And hopefully you now know the um, key definitions of um, current and electrical charge and how they relate to electric circuits. So hopefully you'll have some more independent practice questions that um, if this is being set as part of your lesson, your teacher will be putting forward for you. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching the tutorial.